And now, the moment you've all been waiting for, the answers to the questions everyone's been asking, what do I do about my puppy biting me? I am going to tell you after I introduce myself. For anybody who doesn't know me, my name is Jennifer Malloway. I am a dog trainer and behavior consultant, and I'm here to help you have the most magical relationship you can possibly have with your dog. So... Hi everyone, <laughs> welcome to the Perry family, uh, <laughs> my wonderful, wonderful supporters. Do um, you guys have any questions about puppy biting? Anybody here have a young puppy? I know a lot of people got puppies during the uh, thing that shall not be named, <laughs> um, but some of them might be a little bit older now, um, but lots of people are still getting puppies. Um, welcome Jackie Hoover. <laughs> he says, I finally made it to one of your streams and Dave sent me. <laughs> I'll have to thank him. And thanks for coming. Um, so why don't we, why don't we dig in? Um, I think the first thing to know about puppy biting is that it is totally normal. All puppies bite. In fact, if a puppy's not biting, I'm actually a little concerned. <laughs> so a puppy should be biting. They actually need to bite. Puppies, um, this, is, this is how they explore the world. A lot like human children, you know, babies, toddlers, they start to explore the world with their hands and their mouths. Don't they put everything in their mouths? And dogs are no different. They, they use their mouth to learn about the world. Um, and it's actually really, really important that they do. They need lots of experiences like that. Um, and hi, Jesse. Jesse has a 10 month old chocolate lab <laughs> who I'm told is still very mouthy. Um, so, uh, so a puppy who's biting doesn't intend any harm. They don't even know that it hurts. They're not being naughty. They're just being a puppy, you know? Puppies are babies. So they're just being a baby, really. Um, and aside from exploration and play, puppies bite for a lot of other reasons, but basically it all comes down to they're just trying to meet their needs in the only way that they know how. They don't have the knowledge and the skills to, to figure out what they need and figure out the best way to, to have that need met, um, so they bite. That's just what puppies do. So if you are at all concerned that your puppy is abnormal, they're biting way too much, uh, rest assured, you're, it's probably a normal puppy. <laughs> um, and so, yeah. So we wanna give them a little bit of, a uh, little bit of leeway here that they know that they're just, they're just doing what puppies do. Now, of course, we can't just, let them free to wreak havoc on our hands and arms and the rest of our homes, right? Um, so we have to find ways to uh, to find to help them meet their needs while meeting our needs of protecting our bodies and our clothes and our belongings. Yes. Um, so uh, I propose that we address puppy biting with essentially a, a three pronged attack. <laughs> um, first of all. We meet the puppy's needs and those aren't always obvious so i'm going to go through common puppy needs that might lead to more biting and and how we can kind of mitigate that uh number two is that we manage the damage uh that we just we don't give them too much freedom too fast uh meaning we use gates and puppy pens and crates uh to keep them confined to puppy proofed areas when we're not watching and finally we teach them how fragile humans are. Uh, we, our skin is very sensitive and those teeth are very sharp and they do need feedback about if, when, and how hard to bite, yes? Um, so uh, with that said, um, let's talk about some of those other reasons that puppies bite. I mentioned that it's, it's for fleur, fleur? <laughs> it's for exploration and for play, but there's a lot of other reasons that they might bite. They might be overtired. They might be teething. They probably are teething. <laughs> they might just be bored. They might be lonely. They might be hungry. They might be frustrated. They might be overstimulated. They might be startled or scared or did I say frustrated yet? 
Um, there's a lot of reasons that a puppy might be feeling some things and the only way that they know how to try to get those needs met is to bite, yes? Um, so just telling them no mm, might help with some biting sometimes, but it's really not gonna address those, those root causes for the biting, um, meaning that the puppy's not gonna feel like their needs are being met and they're gonna get more frustrated and you're gonna get more frustrated because the biting's not gonna stop. So let's talk about Let's talk about how we address this. Uh, and let me welcome CK Zantix, who says, Happy Friday. Oh my goodness, happy Friday to you too. I'm very glad for the weekend. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's talk about puppy biting. So you probably want to know the part about how to teach them to stop biting. That's the part that everybody wants to know. And that's the part that most videos and blogs and articles that you can find on the internet, that's what they'll usually talk about. And some of those are really great resources. Some of them are less than great, um, but they're not the whole story. So um, we, we do want to teach them uh, to control their jaws. That's actually really important that they learn during early puppyhood um, because when they're learning to, to inhibit the force of their jaws, um, they learn something that we call uh, acquired bite inhibition or just bite inhibition. And what that means is that they understand uh, that in moments of distress, that they can, they can bite with um, less than full force, right? Which is important if they're ever in a, a situation that they feel pressed to bite, that if they should bite, it's not gonna do as much damage. Um, and that's something that currently the consensus is that we, we believe that puppies have to learn that early, um, that they can't, the, it's not something that they learn later in life. So we do wanna put effort into teaching them this early, but I wanna talk about the other issues first. Um, and that is because, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna save it for last rather, uh, because I think that it should come last in your plan for addressing your puppy's biting. <laughs> um, so we, we first check that the puppy's needs are met and if, if we know that they are, then we can teach them about biting. Um, so let's meet their needs. What are those needs? Let's talk about <laughs> um, in, in no particular order. Um, a puppy might be bored. Um, a, a puppy who's biting might just feel a need to have more mental and physical and sensory stimulation in their life. Um, all dogs, but especially puppies, need daily physical and mental enrichment as well as lots of social interaction, right? They're, they're very highly social beings. And so, um, so yes, yeah, you, you, you can easily bump up the mental en enrichment um, daily by just s changing their meal time. Uh, not the time exactly, but changing the, the way that they're fed from a food bowl to giving them creative food puzzle enrichment. Um, now, I've got other videos going into great detail about all the types of all the types of um, different ways there is to feed a dog. And my belief is that we should be giving them different ways all the time, right? Um, I don't mean just stop feeding them the bowl and get one puzzle and give them that every day. I mean get get a variety and rotate them. Use one for a couple days and switch them out. Um, you can make your own at home for free. There are, I use all the time, I use uh, empty toilet paper and paper towel rolls. Put food in there, poke some holes in, cover the ends, um, and let my dog tear them apart. Um, I actually just, oh, where'd it go? <laughs> I just emptied um, a tissue box and I was looking at it and thinking, this would be great mental enrichment. I can just, you know, put some stuff, some like uh, paper bags torn up in there with his kibble and he can figure out how to get it all out. He'll, he'll pull the pieces out, he'll push it around, knock it around until the kibble falls out and a dog getting to, to use their brain to solve that puzzle to get their food is really gonna provide that, that mental enrichment. It's gonna tire them out and like we said on Wednesday, a tired dog is a good dog, right? 
Um, so this is that was my spiel about uh, ditching the dish or ditching the bowl. Um, I my this is this is one of my things. I just uh, I think that every dog owner would be happier and their dog would be happier too if you just got rid of that food bowl entirely and use your own creativity to figure out other ways to feed feed um, your dog. And puppies too, right? There's no there's no age restrictions on this. Um, and and the, honestly, the earlier the st they start, uh, the better they're gonna get at it and you can have a lot of fun with it. Um, in fact, uh, I, um, there's, I, I said you can make a lot at home, but there's tons and tons of toys on the market too. Um, like these, uh, these are just a few of my favorites. Dizzy was using the, uh, this red one down here is the Kong Wobbler. Um, that's how he got his lunch today. And it's one of his favorites. I mean, anytime he sees it out, uh, on the counter or on a shelf, he's like, are we doing that? <laughs> um, so these are these are really great ways to feed a dog that are not just your typical food bowl. And these are, don't, don't, don't think that these are the only options either. There's tons more. There's like way more than I could ever show you, but any of them are going to be better than your typical food bowl. Yes. Um, CK Zantic says, so you think dogs need to be on dry food versus wet? Wet might get a little messy. Um, no, I don't. Um, actually, let me pull that back up here. <laughs> um, uh, some of these work best with dry food, but some of them are, are ideal for wet food, actually. So most, most days, almost every day, uh, I would say actually every day. There's, I, I can't think of a day that we haven't given Dizzy uh, a Kong. And these, what we do is we put a couple pieces of kibble at the bottom, um, just because it gets harder at the bottom, um, but we fill the rest of it with his wet food. Uh, and then we freeze it to make it last longer. Uh, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more difficult for him to get out. Um, the other one, wait, wait, the, this one, the Zogo Flex, <laughs> um, is also a really, really good one for wet food. Um, this one is a, uh, it's Licky Mat brand. Uh, I forget what they call it, but um, but it's bowl shaped. But you can smear wet food in there, and they they kind of have to figure out how to stabilize it to get wet food out. Really good options. Um, yeah. So there's these. Like I said, these aren't your only options. There are lots more, um, and uh, and lots of them are very good for wet food. So if you're feeding your dogs wet food, there are solutions for you too. I promise. <laughs> Uh, Say says, I'm totally going to try this with my beagles. I'm sure they would love it. Yes. Oh my gosh. Everything you've told me about your beagles, this would be their jam. Um, so yeah, give that a shot. Um, but it's, like I said, especially puppies, they, their brains are growing at like it's the fastest that they're ever going to grow in their life. Right. Meaning they're forming neurons. They're learning so much and they need lots and lots of stimulation and feeding is one of the best ways to provide that that mental stimulation um so and then of course outside of mealtime pu puppies need <laughs> lots of things to chew on um so if you don't want them chewing your shoes or your furniture uh it will behoove you to provide lots of things that they like to chew um yeah <laughs> so um but Puppies, like I said, are dogs are social beings. They have very high social needs, and they're really not designed to be left at home for long hours. Um, if you have a puppy and there's no way that you can be home um, for for part of the day, or you know, if 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 it's you're, you feel like you're stuck leaving them at home for a full work day, um, they're uh, Maybe this isn't the case right now, um, but it might be at some point. Um, or, you know, maybe that is your situation right now. Uh, but there are lots of ways to figure out how to get your puppy's social needs met um, because they're going to they're gonna feel bored and deprived if left alone for, for too many hours. Um, actually, I, for, for a very young puppy, I wouldn't leave them alone for longer than two hours. Um, if you can manage that, that would be ideal. Um, but yeah, you can, I mean, uh, recruit 
neighbors or friends, um, neighborhood kids who can't have a dog of their own would love to help out. Um, or you can hire professional, you can get dog walkers or daycares, um, puppy specific visitors to come in and break up the dog's day, provide some social time, some mental enrichment, um, and exercise. And it's a great way to, to meet your dog's social needs because a dog who's very, very lonely is going to be overexcited. I mean, most dogs are excited when we come back, regardless of if, whether we've been gone five seconds or five hours, right? Um, they're going to be excited. But a puppy who really feels socially deprived is going to be way overexcited when you are there and they're going to kind of feel a little bit out of control and they're going to be extra bitey um, and it's going to be a lot harder for you to manage. So um, finding ways to meet their, not just their uh, exercise and enrichment needs, but their social needs too um, can help with the biting. Um, CK says the Weeble Wobble Bowl is brilliant. I like that name too. That's what they should call it. <laughs> it also seems entertaining for me to watch. And you know what, CK, the funny thing about these, these puzzle toys is, is that like the idea is that it gives your dog something to do so that you can focus on whatever you need to do. Um, but I find myself like I'll give them to Dizzy and then I just want to watch. I, I, I used to, um, before the before the move last fall, um, I was dog sitting and dog walking every day almost. And you know, dogs who would come and stay over, like I would always provide ways for them to, to eat this way as well. And they all find different, like they don't all find the same way to solve these puzzles either. They 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 are individuals and they're creative, and it's it's it is really fun to watch. Um, so yeah, like I said, you you can have a lot of fun with it. Um, but yes, so meeting your dogs, your your puppy's social needs, um, and and when you are there, um, it's a good idea to to plan playtime and training time, right? Um, make sure that you know sometimes if if you've had a long day at work and you've come home, like of course you want to say hi to your puppy, but there's dinner to make, there's tomorrow to prepare for, there's other things that you've got to do, um, and so you want to make sure to to prioritize time with the puppy. They need to be bonding with you and learning from you. Um, so, so make sure that when, when you can, uh, that you're, you are setting aside time for those, those purposes. Um, so yes, ways to, uh, avoid a bored puppy who might be overbitey. Um, next, uh, is maybe the puppy is a little bit overtired. Um, puppies need to sleep a lot. Like, a lot more than most people realize. Most puppies need, on average, about 16 to 18 hours of sleep a day, um, which means, and, and well, and here's the thing, puppies have some pretty severe FOMO. Um, so if there's anything going on, they're not gonna realize that they need to put themselves down for a nap. Um, they, they're gonna wanna they're gonna wanna pay attention to whatever's going on. Um, so you can help them get the sleep that they need uh, to be functioning properly by scheduling naps into their day. Um, if you if you can be consistent about it, that helps too. Um, you can make sure that they have a, a quiet, peaceful place to to go rest where they're not going to be disturbed. Uh, if you have many household members, um, and there's there's a lots of coming and going and, and activity going on, you want to make sure that the puppy's nap time space is kind of away from all that. Um, and you can help them to feel comfortable enough to actually fall into their sleepy time um, by hanging out with them until they are asleep. Sometimes just our mere presence, having that warmth, um, maybe even uh, leaving something you know, hold on to something warm um, that smells like you and then leave it in their in their crate or their pen um, to provide some of that comfort to help them doze off. Um, so you can you can help them fall asleep and stay asleep by providing these nice, comfortable, quiet spaces uh, where they can rest. Um, and also be aware of your puppy's rhythm. So dogs, um, tend to be most active at dawn and at dusk. Uh, they're called crepuscular beings, um, unlike unlike nocturnal or di diurnal. Is it called diurnal, what, what we humans are? 
there's there's like mostly awake at night, mostly awake during the day, and then dogs uh, who are mostly awake at dusk and dawn. Um, and so uh, they're gonna be they're gonna be extra zany, <laughs> like first thing in the morning, and then usually it's somewhere between like six to eight at night. Um, and during those times, they might be extra bitey. So you can by all means play with them, but if they uh, have a tendency to put their mouths on your clothes and your hands when they're kind of in zoomy mode, um, then maybe that's the time to let them get their energy out in their pen or in their puppy proof room um, away from you. Just let them play and get it all out uh, without practicing that behavior of putting teeth on human skin. Um, so yeah, know, know, know your puppy's rhythm uh, and when they're more likely to be extra crazy and more likely to be extra tired. And, and just be aware that sometimes a puppy who seems kind of crazy, like it looks like they're out of control and they just, they, they just can't stop, sometimes that is the overtired puppy. <laughs> um, so many similarities between puppies and kids, um, but that's, it is what it is. Let's see, uh, Violet says, I feel a Kong or Zogo flex with a few kibble, but mostly low fat yogurt with chopped up fruits and veggies, then freeze, change up the flavors every day. Sometimes I'm gonna put this up here so you guys can see. Um, sometimes add shredded coconut or nutritional yeast because it tastes like cheese and they love it. Yeah, I mean, we, we touched on using kibble type foods or, or wet dog foods, but absolutely, that's a really, really uh, great way to provide more um, mental enrichment and, and sensory stimulation, you know, their, their smell and their taste when they're encountering a, a variety of foods. And they can have quite a few fruits and vegetables and, and other things like Violet Mentor, uh, you know, anything that you do want to give them, do a quick Google, make sure it's nothing that's bad for dogs. Um, but they can have a lot of stuff um, and, and it's really fun for them. And take videos and share them with us because dogs experiencing new flavors for the first time is like, some of the best entertainment you'll find. Um, so we've got, we've taken care of our bored puppy. We've taken care of our tired puppy. And now let's talk about teething um, because I don't think it gets talked about enough. Um, puppies are like pretty much teething for the whole time you'd call them puppies, right? Like they, they may start teething between uh, between five and six weeks of age. So they're teething when they come to you. Um, and they may continue teething up until six or seven months, I believe it is. Um, and luckily we don't really remember this, but teething hurts, you know, and that's part of the reason that dogs need to bite and gnaw on things. It, it just to relieve some of that pain. So, um, just like you would get all those things for boredom, that you also want to make sure that they have a variety of textures and materials um, just to find what they find nice to chew on. Um, because the more the more you can cater to their preferences, the more likely they are to chew on those things that you want them to chew on and not your hands or anything else. Um, so like I said, a variety and lots of them because um, they're going to be chewing for a while and they're going to go through things and they're going to need more. So just invest now. <laughs> um, so yes, make sure your teething puppy has things to chew on so they're not chewing on you. Um, and then finally, I'm going to lump together some of the, the other... Uh, I call them needs, um, but they're, they're things that we, we definitely need to tend to. When I'm gonna lump together uh, frustrated, scared, startled, and overwhelmed puppy, um, because a lot of the things that we might do um, to help the puppy in these situations are kind of similar. So first of all, if there's a lot going on uh, in the home, it can excite a puppy beyond their ability to make good choices and to handle their emotions, yes? Um, so we can help the puppy out by reducing the noise and especially reducing the movement uh, in the area where the puppy's at. Um, so, you know, put on some calming music, uh, bring out some low key activities, but, but calm, calm it down, <laughs> calm everybody down. Um, especially when you've got kids in the house, this can be uh, quite a challenge, um, but, if, uh, if the puppy's being extra bitey and they're 
<laughs> and they're going to, uh, sorry, weird, weird comments, impartial geek. I don't know if that's for us, but anyway, <laughs> um, um, God, I'm all flustered now. No. Um, yeah. So, uh, we just want to kind of try and bring a more calming environment, um, so that we can interact with the puppy without pushing them, overwhelming them, pushing them over that threshold. <laughs> um, Say says, oh, even as adults, some still love chewing things. My multi poo loves chewing on rawhide, and it sort of makes them more relaxed by the end of the day. Thank you for saying that, Say, because I by no means meant to indicate that adult dogs don't shouldn't be shouldn't be biting. Um, I'm biting, chewing. Uh, should they shouldn't be biting? <laughs> But they they should be chewing. Most most dogs will continue to chew for the majority of their life. Um, that's and and we should absolutely continue to provide things for adult dogs to chew on. It's just it's just a heavier need um, in that puppy through adolescence phase. Um, but yes, absolutely, adult dogs get all these things for your adult dogs too. Uh, they can all benefit absolutely. <laughs> um, okay, so. Yeah, so we sit down if there's just too much going on and the puppy can't handle it. Um, also, sudden noises and sudden movements can also be really scary or, or startling to a puppy, um, which can lead to that puppy being more bitey. Um, and especially when that, um, that movement or, or handling touch is directed to... <laughs> yeah, is touch is directed towards um, the puppy, um, you, if, if the puppy's not comfortable with, with whatever's happening, you're going to get a lot more bites directed towards people, bites directed towards hands and arms and clothes. And, um, and this type of biting, you're, you're going to know that it's different because the puppy, um, usually it's, it's, first of all, their body language is going to be different. You know, when they're playing, they're going to be way more loosey goosey and, um, and they're just gonna look happier. <laughs> um, but uh, a puppy who's biting because they're startled, scared, frustrated, um, or something like that, usually it's it's very targeted. They're going right for you, um, and it stops it stops when you stop. Um, and so this is a sign that your puppy was giving earlier earlier indications. Um, they're trying to use their body language to let us humans know that. They weren't comfortable with something going on. Um, if they're resorting to biting, it's usually because those early indications were ignored. Um, and so it's a good idea, uh, if, if this is the type of biting you're experiencing, it's a good idea to stop what's happening um, and reassess the situation. Uh, you know, try and figure out, you know, what was, what was going on just before the bite that might have caused the puppy to bite in that scenario. Um, if you stop, and the puppy stops biting, it's a pretty good indicator that um, it was something that the humans were doing. Um, and so you might ask yourself uh, in, in that situation, um, if, if you can't, if you don't know exactly what was going on, um, or maybe you do, uh, but you can start asking yourself some, some helpful questions like, uh, does the puppy need to be touched and or held right now? Um, a lot of times, especially, again, especially with kids, um, if it, when you've got a puppy at home, like you want to play and cuddle with it, right? Like you, you just, you want to hold it. You want to pick them up. You, it's, that's just what puppies do to us. Um, but when we do that, a lot of times we, we take away their, their bodily autonomy. Um, they are learning that humans ignore their body language and, and don't, don't respect the, the communication that they're trying to give, um, and that they don't have control over their self and their environment, um, which leads to frustration and a lot of like, I mean, biting is part of the problem, but there's more to it. Um, so it's really important that we let the puppy know, I see you, I understand that something's uncomfortable, so do they need to be held or touched right now? And if it's something that we need them to do, is there another way to get the puppy to do what we need them to do or to go where we need them to go? Um, there are lots of ways, and we talk a lot about this in, in training, um, but yeah, there, there's other ways to move a puppy without actually picking them up and physically moving them. Um, so uh, yeah.
I had to check my notes here real quick. Am I missing anything? Because this is important. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, no. So just just reevaluate, and then um, you might also ask yourself, you know, if if you are finding yourself frequently in this situation, um, it can be a really good idea uh, to contact a trainer at that point, um, because the more the more you um, encounter these these situations of conflict with the puppy, um, if if you don't feel uh, entirely equipped to handle them in a way that meets both the human and the dog's needs, um, it can lead to problems later, like I said. So it's a good idea to get the, get trainers on board early. Um, a lot of times people, you know, it's a dog, it's a puppy, they're easy, um, and, and people wait. They're like, I can handle it now. It, we'll, we'll call a trainer if we need it, if there's a problem later. Um, but actually, puppyhood is the best time, the perfect time um, to make sure that you are very well equipped to handle this situation and pretty much all the others. Um, let's see, Sarah. Sarah says, I don't bite very often, but I'm definitely a puppy with issues. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, Biting is not just a just a puppy issue, is it, right? I mean, I I was just reading about uh, someone telling funny stories about their their preschooler biting, and it's like we do the same thing. It's just that puppies happen to have way sharper teeth. Um. So, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, just just make sure um that <laughs> um that, that like situations like that do need to be handled with care and diplomacy even. <laughs> um, so, so you just want to make sure that, that both you and your puppy know how to navigate those situations peacefully. Um, Say says, it's fascinating how different doggos are. Toby wasn't really a biter as a puppy, uh, but he was a sleepy head and that's lucky. The sleepy ones are nice. <laughs> uh, he was the only one that I rescued as a puppy. The other ones I adopted a tad older. Okay. Um, well, that's, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I, not, not all puppies, or the same level of bitey. Certainly, even breed um, plays a role in, in just how bitey they're gonna be, you know, because we, as we've talked about before, some breeds, um, we, we have actually bred them for generations uh, for their biting and latching on skills. Um, Malinois, you know, that have become very popular lately uh, due to um, that movie, somebody help me out, John Wick, is that, is that what it is? There, anyway, there's movies with a couple of Malinois, and Malinois are very cool dogs, but they are a lot of dog. They are not for the the first time dog owner or even the average dog owner. Um, and they're they're one of those breeds that were they were bred to bite and hold on. Um, so even as puppies, you're gonna you can you can Google it. You can see lots of videos of baby Malinois. They're tiny and they're like ah, and they hold. Oh gosh, it's like you know so that's but that's normal for their breed um so that's a nice segue into the the final need uh that i want to address which is just play right most uh, I, I think i maybe I, I could be wrong about that but but generally when we speak about uh, puppy biting and how to address it people are talking about play biting um which is normal puppies play with their mouths um so what you want to do is again buy lots of toys, keep them handy, be ready with them, um, strategically place them around the house so that when you're there with your puppy and your puppy decides it's time to play, you've got something to offer them instead of your hands and arms. Um, and so, and, and like I just, just like with the chew things, uh, toys, you want to make sure that, you know, try a variety. There's, there's, almost unlimited types of toys. You know, there's ropes and rubber toys and tug toys and balls to chase and just like, um, but I, uh, so so try a variety of, of materials and textures. I particularly like tug toys, especially long tug toys, um, because it can it can uh, create some space uh, when you are playing with your puppy. Um, they, they can be nice um, walking toys so that like if, if you're, Hell, if you're <laughs> if you're walking around the house, or even on a on a walk where your dog's on leash, um, the the long tug toys can be a really nice solution um, because 
you walking around, a lot of puppies tend to go for pants and ankles. Um, and even on a walk, uh, a lot of puppies will tend to bite the leash, uh, which we don't want them to do. Um, so if you have something else to offer them, uh, it's just a nice replacement. Just make sure that it's something they like. So you, you want to make sure that you've auditioned lots of things uh, to find the, the texture that, that meets their preference. Um, and so also, uh, if your puppy comes to you with a toy, if they try to engage you with a toy, um, you want to reward that by playing with them. Don't, don't ignore the puppy who picks up a toy to play. Uh, that is a great way um, to teach a puppy without even using food um, that toy play is nice. Toy play is preferred. Toy play is awesome. <laughs> um, oh, Toby is watching too, by the way, since you moved your schedule. Oh, that's so cute. Hi, Toby. <laughs> um, so and I hope I hope Toby likes our ideas here. <laughs> Um, okay, and then, um, like I said, I like the rope toys, I like the long tug toys, and so it's, it's really important, or it's a good opportunity at the very least, to, to teach them the rules of tug. Playing tug with your dog, um, dog or puppy, no matter their age, is a really, really good way to teach them a lot of skills. Um, it's not just a good way to get their teeth off of you and onto something uh, approved, <laughs> um, but it's a great way to teach them um, some patience. Uh, we teach them to wait until you say it's okay to grab the toy. It's a good way to teach them drop it or out um, when they need to let go of something, and it's also a really good way to practice uh, not putting teeth on human skin. Um, and I almost forgot to put it uh, in the description. I'll, I'll be sure to put the link down here, but I have um, a sheet that explains the my what, what I think are the most important rules of the game of tug, um, and and how to teach drop it and out is is in there somewhere. Um, so I'll put that link if anybody is interested in, in teaching their dog those skills. Um, I think that they're really valuable. Um, and let's see, CK says, that's how Cusco greeted me when I came home. After saying hi, he would go get a toy and bring it to me for playtime. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, what, don't we want like all dogs to do that? <laughs> that? That means no jumping. That means no biting. That's or no barking even, right? That's that's like that's a catch-all solution. That's a panacea. <laughs> we can all can Cusco should teach all the dogs uh, how to how to just go grab a toy. Do, do I know what Cusco is? What what's Cusco's breed? <laughs> uh, the old-fashioned geek says this training is making me want to go get a, another puppy. <laughs> Um, yeah, me too. <laughs> and no joke. Um, I really, really want a puppy. But I reached out to uh, a, a rescue organization today um, and to talk about po fostering puppies, um, which could be a really good way to get a puppy in our lives um, and, and do some good. Um, and I, I'm really excited. So I hope they get back to me. Oh, yeah, he was a Shih Tzu poodle. Okay. <laughs> um, so now we're getting to the meat of the, the stuff. You know, um, we do need to teach puppies first to, like I was saying at the beginning, to inhibit that force of their jaws, um, to not bite so hard. Um, and after they learn that, then we can teach them, if you want, not to ever put teeth on, on human skin. Um, that's, that's fine, but the important part is that they first learn to bite softly and then before they learn not to bite at all um, and how we do that this is this is the kind of thing where if you were to google it you're gonna find you're gonna find a lot of different answers um, there's some overlap there's some that are completely different um, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best way to handle puppy biting and this is coming from um, you know we, we do need to provide feedback the, for the dog that we have to provide feedback for them to learn at all um, but how we do it can affect your your dog's trust in you um, their perception of you um, and as I always say you know I I always want to make sure that the the bond that we have and that dogs trust in me remains intact so I never want to do anything that might startle them, scare them, hurt them, anything like that. Um, and so, so I just, I wanted to say that to, to let you know why, why I approach this the way that I do. Um, so what you want to do, um, if you are 
you've, you've met all your dog's other needs, right? Um, and you are playing with them. Uh, you've got toys to redirect them to. Um, then what happens when they do put teeth on skin and it's too hard? Um, so what I like to do is stop the play. Suddenly, immediately, stop moving. Because movement attracts puppies. Um, and so you want to calmly remove your hand from their mouth um, and then remove yourself from the play area for about 10 seconds. Um, this, it's, it's helpful if you have been playing with them in like inside the puppy pen or in the puppy proof room where you can easily step over a gate um, where the puppy can't follow you to continue biting you. Um, they, they, they lose access to you, um, but it's brief because they're puppies and their attention spans are, are all over the place. And uh, also we don't wanna, I don't know, we don't wanna make them feel too bad, right? Um, as I said in the, uh, at the top, um, puppies, they're not intending to hurt you. They don't know. Um, they just need some feedback. And rather than, you know, yelling at them or making a loud noise, which could startle a sensitive puppy or actually encourage a bolder puppy, um, with the the actual consequence that they need to to uh, to receive the message is that when you bite hard, your playmate leaves. When you bite, the play stops. They don't want the play to stop. That is that is one of the most valuable things in their life is time with you and getting to play. Um, that that social hour. Um, they need that. They value that. So losing it is going to make a huge impact. Um, but it does have to be immediate and it has to be consistent. So I like to, um, make sure that any adults in the house are, are working on this first because young children to, um, apply this accurately and consistently, or even not to yell or scream <laughs> when they get bitten. Um, so this is really important for the adults to work on and, and make sure that you are consistent and that, and that they, the puppy is getting immediate feedback and it happens every time. Um, now, if they mouth gently and softly where, to where it doesn't hurt, I would let that go um, because again, they're, they're learning. <laughs> they're learning that, oh, okay, soft biting is fine. I will, my, my family will stay close, um, but when I bite hard, it makes people leave. They're not gonna wanna continue that. So with, with repetition and consistency, you will start to soon see that that play bitey stuff go drastically down. Um, it, it is gonna, it, it's important that you do stick with it, you know, like puppies don't suddenly become adults, you know, they're still, they're still learning, they're still developing, and they're gonna make wrong choices. Um, but they, they need your compassionate feedback. Um, so, yeah, so you wanna stop, stop the play immediately when it's a, a hard bite, step out of the area for about 10 seconds, and then you can go right back into play. No hard feelings, no grudges, nothing. Just, we, we just go back to having a good time and repeat as necessary. Um, now, if, if, the, if the biting is, is out of control or is, it continues despite the feedback, um, that's a really good indicator that one of, those, one of those other reasons for biting might be in play, um, and so then we need to circle back to meeting the puppy's needs. Um, maybe now is not the best time to be working on soft biting <laughs> during play. Um, uh, yeah, just maybe it's nap time. Maybe we need to provide some other chewies or uh, an another. Maybe they're hungry, <laughs> um, but but yes, they need. They have another need that needs that needs to be met. <laughs> Um, say says fostering is amazing. That's great. Yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a long time, and you know, it just the the situation. It's sometimes it's just not right, and and I feel like it might be right just now. So, I, I hope it works out. Uh, America's got crafts. I like that idea. Puppy bites hard, stop play and leave. Makes sense. Yes, I'm I'm glad you like it because it it's it's very similar to a lot of the advice that you can find out there online. Um, but sometimes there's there's other things added in and and I this is this is actually relatively new to me too you know I'm I'm still learning and I used to 
include other bits into the the puppy biting feedback sort of scenario you know i i have done the yelp situation to get the puppy to stop um i have I have tried yanking my arm back, which is a terrible idea. That's a good way to, to hurt yourself even worse. You know, I've, I've tried some of the other things, um, but the more I learn, the more I realize what they just really need is sudden calm leaving. They, that's, that's the feedback they need. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's it. I just ran, I'm like, I got, I got to the bottom of my notes. Um, so, uh, say thank you so much. She says, uh, I love the fact that your way of handling dogs is so kind. Most people, even vets sometimes recommend reprimanding them on things like that. And, and that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of why I, I want to be here to, to share another perspective because yeah, uh, I mean, you, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, there are plenty of vets and trainers and dog owners and like, people of in in all sorts of areas who you know they they've learned to deal with dogs a certain way and maybe it's worked well enough for them but i don't know i i just find that for me like a, a common thread in my life and this isn't this isn't even just related to dogs but i just i just always want to stri i i want to strive to find ways to better myself, uh, just to be a better person for others. And that absolutely extends to dogs. And it just so happens that the, the science behind it also fascinates me. Um, and so I, I just keep learning. And um, at this moment in time, this is the best way that I know how to to handle this issue. Um, and, and of course, I'm going to bring you that, that perspective, no matter what we're talking about. Um, but, but I'm, I'm glad that you appreciate it because I think, I think that we can always do better, you know, and, uh, there's, there's that, my, I think it's Maya Angelou, that quote, um, you know, we, we do the best we can until we know better. And when you know better, you do better. Um, that's, that just means so much to me. Like I, I think about that all the time. Um, and yeah. And so I think, I think that this is, this is really the best way to provide, uh, feedback for the puppy and at the same time, protect your hands and arms and your clothes and your things, um, so that everybody at the end of the day is as happy as can be. Um, CK says, I I've considered fostering, but not sure I could give them up when they get their forever home. You know what that's called, CK? <laughs> we call that foster failing. <laughs> um... And that's great too, you know? I mean, it, of course, foster uh, organizations, uh, rescues and, and, um, and shelters who, who place puppies in foster, of course they want to keep their foster families because the, the longer you stay a foster, the more puppies that they can help. Um, but if that dog is your dog and you know it, you know, at least that dog got a home, right? Like it's, it, for me, it seems like a, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> um, but I, I know plenty of people who have done it and, uh, who knows, maybe that'll be yes too. But, um, but in the meantime, I think it'll be fun and I will get to share. Hopefully, I, I mean, I hope this works out. It's, they haven't even, um, responded to me yet, but, um, but if it works out, then I'll be able to share cute puppy stuff with you guys too. And, um, Who's not going to love that, right? <laughs> so, yeah. So, anybody have any questions? I mean, um, I kind of, I kind of just went through it with the, with the puppy biting. Um, any, <laughs> I know I may have some, some trainer friends and colleagues watching anything that I missed. Um, I mean, I'm the first person to admit, I do not know everything. Um, I just, I share what I know and what I feel and, um, yeah. <laughs> so feel free, uh, if, if you know something I don't to, to pop it in the comments there, um, it helps everybody. Right. So, uh, Karen says I would fail for sure. I fall in love with fur babies so easy. And actually I'm, you know, I am a little bit worried about that. I mean, given our experience with the, <laughs> with the Pomeranian puppies, but, um, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say no to puppies. I mean, that's like when they're, they're cutest, of course, they're cutest and they're biting us, but still. <laughs> um, 
yeah it's it'll be fun i hope it works out i mean i'm, I'm gonna keep looking at, at other places too i just i'm new to the area so i don't i don't know um i don't know who's here and and who to work with so um i'm still learning <laughs> karen says that's because we didn't side track you this time no not too bad this time karen <laughs> um so uh, yeah, well, good. Um, I, I know a lot of you guys who have been commenting, you, you do have older dogs, and um, but maybe if you end up fostering or uh, actually, this is great information for even if you're interacting with a, a friend's puppy or just a puppy that you meet outside at the park or something. This is this is great information for anybody to know, not not just for your own puppy, but if you're interacting with other puppies, guess what? they're learning and, and socializing with you and you have a great impact on that dog. Even if you're never going to meet them again, um, your interactions with any puppy anywhere, anytime can contribute to that dog's growth into a behaviorally healthy adult. And so keep that in mind. Um, anytime you, you know, you see a cute puppy out there in the world and you want to say hi, um, always we want to make sure that the puppy is okay with the interaction that they're not they're not uh pulling back remember to watch that body language um and and you know do no harm <laughs> um and yes absolutely uh give the food games a try that's that's good for all dogs all the time every day um i will talk about that a million more times but uh but yeah you got some uh some good uh examples today and um if you try if you try any new ones i would love to hear you know these these are not all ones that i've tried um so i'm always looking for new stuff and there's always new new food puzzles and and toys on though uh do share with the with the rest of us uh you can put it um in the comments on the video you can put it just you know comment on the facebook page um and of course uh if you're not already you know like the page subscribe to the channel like the videos share all the things um love 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 uh if you could do that because it really helps me out um which in turn will help other puppy owners and of course the puppies themselves so Thank you guys so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful weekend and I will see you again on Monday. <laughs> All right. Bye-bye.